Uh, so glad to represent my people up here on stage. <laughs> um, it's true. I mean, I don't know where to begin, but it's true that there aren't so many um, uh, people of color working in industrial design, especially on an international scale. And uh, actually, somehow the New York Times has quoted me as being the first to work with all of my clients. So believe that or not, in 2010, that's a, a fact. Um, so I'm going to tell you my story, uh, how I got up here in front of you all. And uh, it, it's not about my background, per se, but more about my future. And I'm going to tell it backwards. I'm going to begin with a video that's about two and a half minutes long. Um, that describes where my practice is at now and what's fundamentally most interesting to me, which is a project that I'm calling Made on Earth. And uh, it's a test tape organized by um, a television studio. Um, I won't name any names. But um, I'm looking to garner a larger audience for the kind of work I'm doing in the developing world. So I've worked in, since 2005, um, South Africa, Peru, India, Mexico, um, Senegal, uh, and most recently, Haiti. And um, all of that is kind of fueling one third or a little more than one third of, of the studio's work. Um, so I think it's Mark. Let's run the videotape. This turns me into a design magician. Being an industrial designer is about taking the raw material of life and turning it into something beautiful and functional. I work with some of the best manufacturers like Capellini, B&B Italia, Calvin Klein. This is the Missoni Patchwork Vase. This is pretty much my first handcrafted object. Well, a lot of the inspiration comes from working in the developing world. This is made in Cape Town using silicone over a recycled mosaic glass tile and they can make as many as they want without having any tools, which is great. is about so collaborating, developing a product that they can make by hand, and creating jobs in new markets. I'm Steven Burks, and this is Made on Earth. Out here. So, um, sorry you couldn't see all of that, but uh, there are bits and pieces there that I think everybody picked up on. Um, so, that's what I'm up to. I'm trying to um, launch this whole program around working in the developing world as an independent designer. And um, I'm going to start with the slides here. Um, so, how did I get to do this, um, I guess, is what I want to answer for you guys. Why design now? Um, why I'm designing in the way that I'm designing now is what's interesting to me. Um, so yeah, it's true that I've worked with a lot of very impressive companies, um, Italy, uh, all over Europe, et cetera. But uh, <laughs> I lost the slides. But um, it's also true that um, I came out of school thinking that uh, I would work in a big company, industrial designer in service of industry. Um, I studied at the Institute of Design, first school in the country to offer a PhD in design. Um, went on to graduate school in Columbia um, in architecture and, and really saw myself plugging into a larger system of design. I never really thought of myself working independently and working on small products like these. Um, I 
quickly found out that I was unemployable, in a sense, and, uh, and really more interested in um, connecting directly with people, um, the people behind design. So the, the companies I collaborate with um, to the artisans I collaborate with, I'm, I'm most interested in connecting um, design to community. And I feel like this is what's kind of missing today. And uh, it just so happened that I found my way into working with a lot of uh, these kind of big brands in Europe, and it really wasn't my intention. I, um, I started designing furniture um, in 2000. I did my first piece for Capellini. Um, it was a very different market and furniture back then, and uh, somehow, um, as I progressed four or five years later, I was working with all of these different companies from B&B Italia to Boffi to Capellini, Moroso, et cetera. But I was a bit unfulfilled, um, to be honest. Um, there really isn't uh, anything like the system in, uh, in Italy for design and for um, the designer as auteur, uh, the singular designer that comes over and basically offers their style or signature to a product. Um, and I was a bit uncomfortable for, with that, coming from America, where design is more a function of business. Um, I tried to, in a lot of ways, connect to the brands that I was working with in, in a larger, more strategic way. So, um, for example, in 2004, um, I became a consultant to Missoni. Um, this is a 5,000 square foot uh, showroom, uh, which I designed for them during the Milan Furniture Fair. Um, in collaboration with a Japanese brand that I was art directing uh, called Mogu. Maybe you guys have heard of Mogu. Maybe not. Um, they went bankrupt. <laughs> not because of me, uh, but anyway. Um, what's interesting about this project for me is the collaboration that I created between Mogu and Missoni as a means of trying to extend Mogu's life um, beyond uh, the kind of stuffed pillow items they were making. Um, trying to advance the slides here. Um, and then uh, also, um, while working with Missoni, I tried to offer a new vision for them as well. Um, I actually have 112 slides, so I'm going to go really quickly. Um, one of the concepts I came up with Missoni, my first handmade object, was, uh, were these Missoni patchwork vases. Inspired by the Missoni patchwork sweaters from the 70s, um, I took existing vases and glass and ceramic and covered them in fabric. It seems really obvious, but no one had thought to do that. Um, I took cutoffs from the fashion collection and basically patchworked them by hand over vases that uh, we found at thrift stores here in New York. We did an edition of 60 initially for the exhibition and then went on to do um, an edition of 300 here in the States. Uh, for me, when I look at these, I don't see Italy. I see places like Africa, I see Mexico, I see South America. I see all the inspirations of a brand like Missoni. Um, I went on to uh, design all of the fragrance packaging for Missoni in collaboration with Estee Lauder. Um, this is one bottle uh, that we did a few years back. It actually has a hand-applied little dress of fabric uh, wrapped around it. So Missoni was a great um, entree for me into this kind of uh, working by hand in collaboration with working with industry. Um, this is the collection of fragrances we did for Missoni. Um, the little African collar on each of the bottles we have a patent for with Estee Lauder, as well as the first fragrance bottle ever completely covered in fabric. Um, that was really interesting because, in a way, um, we could find uh, a kind of specialized production. Um, each bottle has, uh, has a single original swatch because they're cut from a larger piece at the same time. Um, and all of those things uh, kind of led up to Africa. So <laughs> how do I go from Missoni to Africa? Um, a lot of people saw the work that we were doing with Missoni, and one company called Artechnica, um, based in LA, wanted to work with us on a project um, with 10 minutes? What's, okay, so <laughs> we're gonna go really quickly here. So um, on a project in Africa uh, in collaboration with Aid to Artisans. Aid to Artisans is the oldest nonprofit. I can't get the slides to work. Okay, so I'll just talk. Um, you guys just advance, Mark or whoever, just advance the slides as we go. One every eight seconds, I guess. Um, so anyway, I went to Africa with Aid to Artisans. Um, they're an amazing organization. They've been in 85 countries around the world since 
for the past, I think, 35 years. Um, they're the first nonprofit to connect design to the developing world. Um, I was a consultant with Aid to Artisans for a few years, um, worked in South Africa uh, and Peru as well, and uh, kind of launched my, uh, <laughs> my career with them um, doing these independent projects. The thing about working in the developing world that's really interesting for a designer is it's kind of like design boot camp. Uh, I landed without knowing much about the artisans I'd be working with, and all of a sudden I had 12 of them to negotiate with. Um, this is my assistant, Jonathan Arlevaris, former assistant. That's a picture of us on the beach in South Africa. It was amazing there, beautiful experience. The kids were happy to see us there too. Um, and the pictures are gonna just go through some of the projects. Uh, so we worked with all kinds of artisans, including this guy, Mr. Recycles, who works in uh, recycling tin cans. Um, I never had any aspirations of working in recycled material, but it's something that kind of came to me through this work. This is what he was doing previously. Um, we started to design a collection of lamps for him uh, using the same technique. So all of this is about collaboration. It's not dictatorial in any way. It's, it's about going there with a set of ideas and knowing how to do what you do in collaboration with them, knowing what, uh, how, how to do what they do. So um, you can see the ribbons of the tin cans here. Uh, and the two different lamps that we made. Um, 12 different artisan groups, only one collection was successful out of that 12. Um, we spent two weeks in South Africa on that first trip um, and worked with tin cans, worked with wire, worked with uh, weaving, worked with um, textiles, um, all kinds of things. Uh, this is Willard Masawara, uh, a group called Feeling African. We gotta go a little faster, Mark, otherwise I'm gonna... Uh, so. Willard was, um, is a Zimbabwean wire uh, basket weaver. I asked him if he wanted to make something larger. He made these, uh, this table concept for us. Um, it's called Tattoo. Tattoo in the Shona dialect means three. Um, and it took us two years to design it. Uh, I went the first time independently working with Willard um, and then went back with uh, the director of uh, Art Technica, Enrico Brisson. Enrico and I uh, redesigned the whole collection so that it could separate into three independent parts, uh, a bowl, a tray, and a basket, um, hence the name Tattoo, uh, for shipping purposes. Willard produces them locally in South Africa and sells them, made the cover of El Decoration, and uh, our Technica distributes them all over the world. Here you can see the weaving technique of the wire going around a pre-existing uh, metal frame, an industrially produced metal frame. Um, and the tray, there you see the tray separated from the bowl and the basket. Um, this project was, uh, is part of the Design with Conscience program that our Technica launched uh, quite a few years back, working with international designers in the developing world, from uh, myself, Helian Angurius, uh, toward Buncha, et cetera. So Enrico and I, in uh, for Aid to Artisans, created, can we go back to that one, sorry. <laughs> um, created what we call the development triangle. Um, this is a little economic model of how I think it really works with a nonprofit and works well. The designer in one corner, um, the artist in another with a kind of creative collaboration between the, between the two, um, the designer collaborating with the distributor um, in a business uh, collaboration. So for example, our Technica said to me, if you go to South Africa and you design something we like, we'll put it into production. So it gets into the role of the designer being more than being more than just a, uh, uh, a stylist, um, I don't have a particular style, I'm not interested in that, and becoming a kind of business person. Um, so the distributor has a business relationship with the artisan in teaching them how to package their goods for international uh, export and uh, helping them learn to distribute internationally. So um, without all three pieces in the triangle, it just doesn't work. I know this seems obvious, but this is the first time when we did it that Aid to Artisans had thought in this way, um, and thinking about the products in terms of international distribution. So um, just quickly through the, <laughs> through the slides, next. So Mandela Mosaics, uh, this is a great case study for us. Um, this is the birthplace of Nelson Mandela, Mandela Park outside of uh, Cape Town. This is what they were making previously. This is an innovation that we came up with for them using recycled mosaic tile and silicone and an existing vase with no molds. They can make as many bowls or vases as they liked. Um, some of my sketches, there I am with a happy product. Uh, <laughs> so those were made from pre-existing vases and uh, very inexpensive technique. All of the glass is recycled, they produce that themselves. 
as much as I wanted her to use gloves, she doesn't, and, and this is silicone going over in layers uh, the glass. So the end product ends up being, here's a product for Capolini, ends up being, uh, being a, a flexible yet um, rigid and translucent uh, object, which is really beautiful. Um, it took us three years uh, from 2005 to 2008 to create the distribution link with Capolini. And, and that's what the work really began to be about, building this bridge from the developing world to um, my first world clients, quote unquote. Um, also for Capolini, we, this is a product we innovated in the studio. There's my assistant shredding design magazines and catalogs um, and applying them to a paper form. So this is a, uh, a recycled shredded magazine paper table. Um, Giulio, Giulio Capolini uh, named it the Love Collection those Italians, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and every single piece of paper is applied by hand. Um, it takes three days to make a table, but um, Capolini was selling them for, I think, $1,500 or something. So um, 2008, I went to Australia with the Nature Conservancy. Um, this exhibition was on at the Cooper Hewitt. Uh, the Nature Conservancy um, preserves large tracts of land all around the world. Uh, they sent designers like myself around the world, I wanted to make a connection to the people, so I met these amazing uh, Aboriginal uh, family there, and uh, they, were, they just happened to be working on the skincare line. Um, I developed this totem, which was a kind of um, conceptual model for sorting material into something that they could use for skincare and for fragrance. I'm trying to get a meeting with Aveda to do that. So then Moroso, this is crazy. <laughs> you guys keeping up with this? Um, I went to Senegal uh, for Moroso. Um, we were gonna do an outdoor collection. They'd already started an outdoor collection uh, with Tord Buncha. They hired me as the art director for an exhibition called Mafrik. I named it Mafrik, meaning my Africa, Moroso's Africa. These are photographs I commissioned with my photographer and videographer of the people of Senegal that are there making things um, because for me, that's what it's all about. Um, now you start to see the Moroso factory um, regardless of what you think of Moroso as a brand, this is how they really make things in Senegal. Um, this is just a house, four stories. These are just guys down the road. And using traditional weaving techniques, um, they're weaving polyethylene cord over uh, a welded steel frame. Um, this is, these pieces are Tord Bunch's pieces in production. And this is how they're made, with music and cigarettes and et cetera. Um, this is the exhibition we designed for Moroso. Um, in Milan in their showroom. Uh, and this was a really great project in collaboration with a number of different artists and designers. Um, one aspect of what I do is bringing all these people together, which I love. Uh, Manda Mori, the photographer, David Ajay, the ar architect, showing his African Cities project. Um, myself, Patricia Archiola, BB Sec, Aisha Bircel as designers. Um, Tord Buncha, of course. Uh, Sole Sisse, a painter and multimedia artist. The textiles we bought in the markets of Senegal, we patchworked them over the existing Moroso collection. Um, and then I designed several pieces for the outdoor collection, which you see here, um, in that same woven polyethylene technique. So the whole collection is called Mafrik and is available now through uh, Moroso, even though it's still very expensive. Um, so uh, are you a hybrid? Uh, the hybrid project is a kind of independent project, which I've started in the studio just to think about um, what it means to be multicultural, what it means to have a pluralistic vision of design, what it means to be multi-ethnic. Um, I think today, conscious consumers are looking for more authentic experiences, and, and the developing world is all of a sudden on the design radar. So these were um, graphics uh, and collage. Can, just, just a second. I know, I'm almost up. Four more slides. So, so um, these we, we assembled, assemblage, bricolage, whatever you want to call it, from existing objects in my studio. So as I've traveled around, I've gathered things, put them together, and, and we photograph them and uh, to represent this notion of hybrid. Um, so it's, it's, it's a philosophy that uh, is very much part of everything that we're doing, um, not just the artisanal work, but also the other, uh, the more commercial projects. And the Museum of Art and Design, right across the street there, um, I'm curating the second floor project space, uh, opening in February with an exhibition called Steven Burke's Are You a Hybrid? which uh, will exhibit a kind of pluralistic vision of design and trace the influence of the developing world from the mid-century to the present. Um, not just in my work, but in the work of my contemporaries and in contemporary art and photography. Next slide. <laughs> um, 
I'm also uh, currently the art director for a new soft luggage line called One Way Ticket. Um, I was in Haiti recently uh, with One Way Ticket doing a kind of uh, survey of the artisans there. So we're producing in uh, different places around the world in collaboration with different uh, fashion designers. Um, next slide. Um, and I'm also on the Clinton Foundation Committee for Haitian Redevelopment and Design. Another reason I was in Haiti about a month ago and going back in a few weeks. Um, this is about uh, people getting together and thinking about ways to, through product development and architecture, and design and branding, uh, rebranding Haiti as this kind of crucible of craft. Um, it's really uh, an, am an amazing environment uh, in craft, in paper mache and stone carving and, and basket weaving and uh, wood carving, metalworking, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm, I'm now developing projects with different uh, corporations around this work in Haiti with the Clinton Foundation. Next. And lastly, I have my first solo museum show opening in March uh, at the Studio Museum in Harlem, which revolves around uh, the basket technique, uh, Senegalese basket weaving, um, and all the different things I think I could do with that as a raw material. So um, what can I say? I think that's it. I just want to say that I'm, I'm uh, very glad to be here and talk about um, making things, because that's what I love to do. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.